So after um, four years of, of researching, reciting the Quran, doing azans, uh, going on jamaat, traveling around the UK, uh, doing it for humans, I wasn't doing it to please my family. I generally was wanted God in my life. Right, so what we're going to look at now then is the verses in the Quran that made me really question my faith. So as I mentioned in the video, um, in, in the recording, um, Muslims believe that Muhammad is perfect. He's the seal of the Prophet. He is human perfection. Now, um, this is Surah Ghaffar, chapter 40 in the Quran, verse 55 to 65. Well, we're going to look, just look at verse 55. And this is um, Allah through the angel Gabriel speaking to Muhammad. And it says, So be patient, O Muhammad. Indeed, the promise of Allah is truth. And ask for forgiveness for your sin and exalt Allah with praise of your Lord in the evening and in the morning. Now, this is the first verse that is, is addressing Muhammad's sin. But we're also going to go to uh, Surah Muhammad. So this is the chapter about Muhammad. And this is verse 40, uh, well, chapter 47, verse 19. And it says, So know, O Muhammad, that there is no deity except Allah, and ask for forgiveness for your sin and for the believing men and believing women. And Allah knows of your movement and your resting place. And then the next one is Surah Al-Fath which is chapter 48, and it says that, uh, verse 2, that Allah may forgive for you what proceedeth of your sin and what will follow and complete his favour upon you and guide you to the straight path. So this is Allah now, through the angel Gabriel, addressing Muhammad that, first of all, he sinned and he needs to repent. Then he needs to, uh, he's going to, his base, this verse is saying that he's going to sin later on and he needs to be guided to the straight path. Now, when I'm reading the Bible, Jesus says he is the truth, he is the way and he is the life. And now here is the Quran saying that Muhammad needs to be guided to the straight path. So after reading about Muhammad and that he was a sinner, just like me and you, um, I started to look at the verses about Jesus in the Quran. This is uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, which is the second chapter in the Quran, and it's verse 87, and it says, And we did certainly give Moses the Torah and follow up after him with messengers. And we gave Jesus, the son of Mary, clear proofs and supported him with the pure spirit. But it is not that every time a messenger came to your children of Israel with what your souls did not desire, you were arrogant and a part of party of messengers you denied and another party you killed. Um, so this here is saying um, that Jesus was supported with the pure spirit. Now he's mentioned 27 times within the Quran and um, he's also mentioned that he's set apart in this world and the hereafter. But what we're going to look at today is um, the Quran denies Jesus being the son God being the Father, but also that he was crucified on the cross. So in Surah An Nisa, um, which is chapter 4, verse 157, it says, And for their saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus the Son of Mary, the Messenger of Allah. And it says, And they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but another was made to resemble him to them. And indeed, those who differ are in doubt about it. They have no knowledge of of it except the following of assumption and they did not kill him for certain and it says rather Allah raised him to himself and ever is Allah ex exalted in might and wise so here it says that um, basically Allah switched somebody and made somebody else look like Jesus and they killed him instead and therefore they were deceived okay so that means that Allah was basically deceiving the people the Jews and the following disciples at the time who eventually became Christians, they were deceived by Allah because it looked like Jesus. It physically looked the same as Jesus Christ. But then, so after reading this, I'm thinking, okay, so the Bible's wrong. But I was actually at this point, I was questioning my faith. I started to read the Bible. I started to read uh, the Guru Granth Sahib, the Vedas, and the Hindu Sikh scriptures. And I started to look for God everywhere. Um, and even after reading this, now this is uh, Surah Maryam, which is a chapter about Mary. Uh, when we read verse 15, 
and peace be upon him the day he was born and the day he dies and the day he's raised alive so this is speaking about jesus okay so it says the peace uh, peace be upon him the day he was born the day he dies and the day he's raised alive so he's dying before he's raised alive and this is the sequence that that it's speaking about so just to clarify more um i'm going to go into the verse uh 33 um to 34 and now this is what i was trying to speak about earlier on it's speaking as jesus himself and it says and peace is on me the day i was born and the day i will die and the day i'm raised alive so that's like jesus is in person writing this himself which is a bit strange when i was reading this i was like that doesn't seem like it makes sense but what really stood out to me is that it said peace be upon me the day i was born that means he was already born and the day i will die and the day i am raised alive so that's like jesus is talking when he was alive that he's already been born but he's, he's gonna die soon and then he will be raised alive now we know that jesus has been raised alive to heaven surah anisa said that god ex allah exalted him and the next verse 34 says this that is jesus the son of mary the word of truth about which they are in dispute so the word of truth is that he was born and the day that he will die and the day he's raised alive so this was given further proof to the bible that jesus was crucified that he was raised to heaven Muslims explain that no, 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 he was born and he's been raised to heaven now. He's going to return, then he'll die, and then he'll be raised to heaven again. But it doesn't say that. So this was another thing that stood out to me, but still I didn't receive Jesus at this point. Unfortunately, round the corner from where I was living, there was a, gr a group of Christians. So as I've mentioned, uh, round the corner from where I was living, and bear in mind, I was married to a Muslim woman at the time, um, which we were actually going through, um, but we were divorced because we weren't legally married. You just verbally married and under the Sharia law. So um, after questioning Islam and having many debates with scholars um, and literally, you know, not arguments, but, but bringing up these queries in mosques, um, as you can imagine, it caused quite a lot of tension. Uh, but I knew in my heart, I was, I was, I was, I was searching for God. I wanted truth, I wanted to be set free. I remember reading this book and I read it in a day and I was laid on my bed and the fear of, of Allah was so heavily upon my heart because if I associated partners with Allah, I'd be going to eternal hell. And here's me now thinking that Jesus could be Lord and Messiah. Um, so I cried out to God and I asked for a sign, I asked for a vision, a dream or anything and Honestly, I was I was at the edge and a peace came over me. Um, I had a vision of being baptized in a river. It was so clear. It was it, honestly, it was like, you know, when you have them deja vu moments, that's what it was like. A vision opened up, bang. I saw myself being baptized in a river. Um, I was filled with so much peace that I actually fell asleep. I woke up in the morning and I went straight to the Christian household. I canceled my clients. I was a personal trainer at the time. And I went straight to the house. I was filled with the love and the presence of God. And then God gave me a, like a little vision of everybody who sent in my life, that he sent these people into my life to bring me to the truth. But I, I didn't listen. I was so touched. I was so blessed and overwhelmed by the love of God that he would love me this much, me a sinner. He would love me this much and he was trying to save me. Um, and yeah, so I, I had this... Ex amazing experience of being freed up by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, now, following Jesus, and this is two days before my baptism, God speaks to me and he said he's going to show a sign. And I knew the sign was going to be at my baptism. So I rang my friend Jacob Waters and I said, when I get baptized, make sure you record because a sign's going to come from God. I'm going to show you now the sign that happened. So the vision uh, of being baptized, I received from God. And it was the same river that we're going to now in Ilkley. Amen. Amen. I mean, really. Wow. really. Shaft's baptism. And at the end of his uh, baptism, we see this. Double rainbow. Double rainbow. Look where the rainbow ends. In the water where he's just been baptised. Amen <laughs> and hallelujah. After a couple of days of being saved, um, I didn't post my testimony and video uh, live on Facebook. Um, I was waiting for God to give me 
the timing to, to release this.